up, y'all? Kofi Kingston here, and I would love to have a drink with Wrestling on the Rocks, depending on what that drink is, preferably non-alcoholic, you know? How's it going? I'm Kelsey Warrior, Seamus. Soda. I would love to have a drink with Wrestling on the Rocks. Maple syrup. I would never have a drink with Wrestling on the Rocks. Welcome, welcome to our first show. That's right, this is Wrestling on the Rocks, where every show is our first show. Thank you for coming in, pulling up a stool, and pouring a drink. You're hanging out with your drinking buddies, your wrestling buddies. That's us. I am at Ref Marsh. Kev, tell the people what's up. Uh, what's up? I'm Kevlar on the Rocks with the X instead of the CK S because it's too long for Twitter. That's right. But you've been hearing that your whole life. Yes. <laughs> At least since high school. Something to that effect. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. We are doing it. What's today? We made it. Tuesday. It's a good day for a drink. Uh, so we gotta go over what? We gotta talk we, about we're raw. We gotta talk about SmackDown. I think it's everything. <laughs> <laughs> that ought to do it. Yeah. We're only at Tuesday, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, it's so long Tuesday. <laughs> so long Tuesday. Hey, uh, we can start off on. Well, I mean, to start off with the thing, dude. What's uh, what's what's in your drink? What's in your glass? Uh, Patty's Irish whiskey for Seamus. I don't know. There's an Irish whiskey called Patty's. Is it good? Yeah. I'd run and grab it. It's right over there. That All producer right. will yell nice. at me for no, I believe. I believe jumping you. up. <laughs> I believe you. I'm going to have <laughs> some Brooklyn crafted ginger beer along with some Sky Vodka. I'm going to make myself a mule. I call Where's Brooklyn the at? Bishop. That's right. Where's Brooklyn? I call up the Bishop Mule. Because just like Bishop, I'm not in New York either, but I still claim there. Just like Bishop from TW Takes Podcast, friend of the show, some of the time. I thought it was because both of you guys are jackasses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Let's just see. kidding, uh, Bishop. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's, he's not like all the other friends of the show. So he actually listens. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is very accurate. No, we're going to bury the one fucking actual friend of the show who supports us. And all the people who like never actually show up or listen or anything that we keep saying like, oh, they're really good guys. <laughs> right. we, that's what, we can't figure this out. We're not good at this. Yeah. We are not good at this. Yeah. Let's use, uh, go ahead. I was just going to say, we're doing something wrong. We just can't figure it out. Where's the, you know, I don't know how messed up we are. Clump says he can't make the show. Fucking uh, like 30 minutes ago before we go live, he's like, check out my new pod setup. I got a new desk and everything. We're all set to go ready for the podcast. It's like, you're not on today. <laughs> like, yeah, well, I'm not going to be on. It's like, well. Matt Brown just joined the chat. He said, I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah, man, <bro. laughs> Matt Brown is a uh, fake Texan. <laughs> He's from, from Phoenix, but he wears cowboy boots because he doesn't know what that means. Sorry. 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 Uh, see, that's what I mean. We can't figure it out. We don't know what's going on around here. We sell more Matt Brown merch than we do our own. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, let's you, well, <laughs> let's hit some of the news. What did you have? You had some stuff for the news, <laughs> producer. Something right now. I had happy birthday, Medusa. Happy birthday to a London. Le- oh. I knew this was going to be a problem, dude. I haven't, I haven't cheersed yet. I started it out so well, set you up. Did you? You just ruined it. Oh, that was the pitch. That was the big pitch. That was it. Yeah. I don't know what more you needed. I need a drink. Cheers and happy birthday to Alundra Blaze, Medusa, Hall of Famer, 
Munster Truck Cheers. Driver. Cheers to Atlanta Braves. Give up. Give up. Uh, cheers. Cheers. Um, I don't see anything in the chat, so I don't think anything else in there. Else. Nothing else in there. Just Matt Brown coming and going. Yep. Walking in, immediately walking out like that Grandpa Simpson GIF. Yep. Um, there was some yeah. other stuff. I'll say, I'll say this real quick. I don't know if you got a chance to see it, uh, Kev. But Tyler Rex went through a gender change uh, and is now going by Gabby oh. Tuft. Um, I, I don't know that we mentioned it, but I do want to just say that, you know, uh, nothing but props for Gabby to come out and, and be so open with that journey and with that, that coming forth. Um, definitely never a bad thing to have more people aware of, of those things and representation. We've talked about a bunch of times is key. So one more voice in that representation, uh, sounds good to me. Um, I wasn't familiar with him as a wrestler or anything like that, so I guess I don't have like a ton to say other than congratulations, and I'm I'm proud that they came out the way that they did, you know. So cheers. Mm-hmm. Yes. Cheers. Um, I thought you had another news thing you wanted me to to do. Is that not the case? Me, producer. No producer. She'll be on Twitter and just like walk by. I'll be like laying in bed. She'll just walk by in the hallway and be like, this happened in the news for the show. And I'll be like, what? What just happened? And I don't write it down and then I'm lost. So, <laughs> <sighs> well, I think that's it then. One thing, did anything else happen in the news? I don't see shit. Yep. Nothing. I got nothing. Let's, the only let's other get thing that I heard, I don't know if you guys, I don't know if you guys did it on the last show, but. Uh, Butch Reed passed. We did mention that, but you did not get to do a tears in your beers as well. So, so cheers. Is there anything you want to say about? It? I know that you had told me before that Doom was. Uh, you're a big fan of them. Yeah, I mean, I liked Doom. Uh, him and Ron Simmons were awesome together. They were just a big force, and sucks to see him go. Well, cheers, rest in peace. I always thought it was um, kind of funny that even though you grew up in Arizona, you somehow grew up a big WCW and NWA style fan. So it's like all those old mm-hmm. Southern wrestling things. It's like, oh yeah, those are those are my favorites. I'm like what? How did you even get that stuff? Yeah, <laughs> we're pretty south. Oh, Terry Funk had a bad hip going on. Uh, Dustin Rhodes tweeted out about that. That that you know. Thoughts and prayers, kind of a deal to Terry Funk. Foley, too. Foley as well, yeah. So yeah, I think that's positive vibes for sure. I'm seeing if there's anything I sent you guys. Nope, nope. All right, this is well organized. This has gone well, guys. Let's get into it, man. Let's talk about. Oh my God, I pulled up Raw. I needed to pull up SmackDown. You ready to talk about SmackDown, Kev? How you been? You weren't here last time. How you been? Yeah. Good, good. Hanging in there. No complaints. Good. Do it. Awesome. All right. Well, let's do it. Let's talk about it, man. Let's get into it. We're here. We're drinking. Things are moving. Something shifted. Let's do it. Let's see. This <laughs> I don't shoot. like when you say something. It's moving. Yeah, it's Something's moving. moving. That's not a good sign. Yeah, there is a shift. Paradigm shift, as it were. Let's see. Smackdown. Did SmackDown open up with Roman? Yeah, he came out. He was all done. Uh, he came out. He's all pissed about yes. about uh, Edge. Giving him the old snuff. He's like, say my name. Acknowledge me as the main event of WrestleMania. Say my name. Say my name. No, no one is around me. Say, baby, my head of table. <laughs> almost. It's terrible. almost how it goes. Yeah, dude. Show up, show up and say my name. New t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, so he was doing that. That's what he was saying. Wow. He was like, say my name. Say my name. Pay my bills. My automobiles. Bills, 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 bills. 
and the club is jumping, jumping. <laughs> Going through the whole Destiny's Child discography. If people don't know that song, they're going to be very confused. That was like three songs. That was quite, that was a med- that was a Glee style medley for you. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what that means, but I bet it's not positive. <laughs> Thank you for coming through, Leah. Cheers. What do you think about this? I thought it was pretty dope, him coming out and just, I mean, even the idea that, like, Edge is going around, taking a tour, going to NXT, going to Raw. I mean, obviously, Royal Rumble happens on Sunday, so he doesn't have, like, a lot of time to get to Roman before those other things, right? So, But I really like the idea of this. I like the idea of Roman going... Because how many times can you say, acknowledge me as the head of the table? Acknowledge me as your tribal chief. Well, this is one where it's acknowledge me as the main event of WrestleMania. Because that's what you win, right? At Royal Rumble, you go on to main event WrestleMania based off who you challenge. In theory, right? That's what it's supposed to be. Yeah. So the idea that Roman's all like, how dare you even consider the idea of the main event WrestleMania is not me. is some bullshit. Mm. I thought that was so yeah. dope. And it was awesome to see Jay Uso back. I love Jay Uso. Yeah. Kev, what do you think about all this? Edge came out, I think. No, he came out later. Never mind. Yeah. What do you think about this? Yeah. Um it was it was good. I think they could have done it in one segment instead of you know, breaking it up across the show, but then again, I don't know how else you would open the show. But I liked it. Yeah. Just hey, give me my respects. Let's do this. Almost like it's, you know, already a done deal. They just, you know, they just need to sign the paperwork. What I think was necessary and what I liked about the, the multi-segment bits, it made Roman have to wait. And you see an impatient Roman. And you see a, a Roman yeah. unraveling. He's losing his cool. And he goes, why would you do that? Are you playing games? It's like you're playing a game with me. Why would you play games with me? You know, and he's yelling. Mm. And you go, oh, he didn't even yell when he was murdering his cousin. But now he's like, <laughs> yeah, now he's like teetering on the edge there because he may not be the main event of WrestleMania because it's someone else's decision now. Mm. Like, that's fucking yeah. cool. Yeah, I can see that. Makes sense, I guess. Yeah. What was also cool is Paul Heyman <laughs> retweeted your artwork of like, your artwork of Roman and Heyman. Yeah, I did sweet. a drawing of Roman and Heyman this week and... I'm doing this new style and I'm really digging it. And Bishop just shits on it every chance he gets because Bishop at Terrible Wrestling Takes doesn't know good things. That's why the title of his show starts with terrible because he's not into false advertising. (laughs) (laughs) And then Paul Heyman gets a glimpse of it. The second person to even like it was Paul Heyman. It'd been up for like seven hours. And Paul Heyman in the middle of the night goes, oh, I like this one, sir. Yeah, and, it was like me and then him. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I think it was Gabe. I think you and Gabe may have liked it. And so he might have been the third. But Gabe, friend of the show, GR Lunar, he liked it. And then like four hours later, Paul Heyman's like, hmm. And he retweeted it. And the world blew up. And then I, I took a screenshot and sent it to Bishop. And I was like, eat it. Eat it. Because he made a comment earlier. He's like, yeah, I don't like the faces. These faces are fucked up because he talks like that. I don't like these faces. You know what I mean? Because he's from New York. Yeah. Well, he's from Delaware. Ish, not quite. (laughs) Closer to New York than we are. I like how he said that we we only live there five minutes, which combined, we were there like over a decade. Well, yeah, combined. I mean, you want to do combined championships and stuff. But yeah, just in time in the chat, Marsh, Kev. Yeah, Justin coming through. Justin, you missed it. We were just railing on Bishop because he had it coming. But then, so Paul Heyman retweets it, gets a ton of likes. Paul Heyman likes it, so you know, what's Bishop gonna do? I sent him a picture. You know, guess what I sent him a picture of? D- dead crow on a plate. So, are you hungry? Eat crow. <laughs> Idiot. Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> good day sir all right all right but anything else you want to say about that opening segment or any of the roman stuff man i'm loving smackdown so much i've got a smackdown polo ref shirt on right now 
And you just got your J shirt in the mail. <laughs> yeah, I just got J Uso shirt. So I'm going to get him because he will. You'll get him. Kev, go ahead. There you go. Save the show. Unless Roman, unless Roman tells him not to. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, all right. Well, if you got nothing else to say about Roman, we can move it right along. Um, let's see here. Move it along, little doggy. Dominic and Corbin had another match. Uh, Dominic won this time. Let's see. Ray was helping. Well, him. he won well, by cheat. Well. Yeah. Mysterio helped him a little. Mysterio helped him by pulling on the leg, which that's a little bit weird, yes. right? Because remember how before Dominic catches an ass whooping and Ray's all like, you can't do it your way. We need to do things my way. I've got a big friend who can really help even the odds. And then that was it. No one ever came out to help. So it's like, is he that good of a friend, whoever you have? So they've just kind of like let that die out and go away. I've seen some people speculate that they may have been meant to be Damian Priest. And I could see that, but I don't like speculate about things that that aren't going to be happening and, and really speculate on things of like what could be happening. Do you think they've just dumped it all together? Or do you think they're going to get back, back around to that? Um, they, they might, you know, when he was talking about his big friend, of course, I thought it was just uh, Cain Velasquez again. Yep. But I, I don't know, like... It's weird how they're going. I don't, you know, they might be lost considering of uh, uh, what's his name was released. Yeah. What Cutler? Yeah. From the low. Yeah. Cutler James. Do you think There's by them cutting Steve Cutler? News the... for you. Put in your pipe and smoke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> smoking. Stop smoking. <laughs> 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 so do you think that with them cutting steve cutler the knights of the the lone wolf i've completely well, we didn't see the other one fuck dude how was how much does that gotta suck man you finally yeah. get some tv time you're around baron corbin dope they immediately yeah. make a sweater for you and then like two weeks later like that ah, forget it you're fired yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think that they're going to circle back to it, dude. I just lost connection. I mean, they could always replace him. Yeah. I'm hearing stuff playing. Are you there? Oh, I'm connected to my phone and not to the computer. Oh, cool. <laughs> there you go. How about that? First show, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. There you go. All right, keep going, Kev. What were you saying? I mean, I think it'd be cool if they added just somebody, a new lone wolf. I don't know what yeah. Tucker doing now. <laughs> Bring in Mojo. Fuck, oh, Mojo. I feel so bad for Tucker. I miss Tucker. I know no one else does, but I do. That's a great call, though. If you have whoever the third forgotten son is, because I don't remember the third one, Wesley Blake. <clears throat> it's forgotten. He's forgotten. If you have Wes, Wes Blake and Mojo <laughs> and Tucker... As the Knights of the Lone Wolf, that could be some. That could be cool. That could be real cool. I saw some people yeah. saying that they want to see Wes Blake now that he's free. They say uh, team back up with Buddy Murphy. They were a tag team who got tag team championship gold in NXT. I never saw it much, so I don't care to say like, oh, that sounds good. But I'd like to see something with Buddy Murphy at this point. And I have also been wondering where the hell Mojo has been. Yeah, where the fuck is Mojo, man? <laughs> Mojo keeps me hype. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Get hyped for Baron. He'll be Baron's hype man. Yeah, that'd be great if he was Baron's hype man. Justin says he honestly feels like they forgot about Ray's surprise help at this point. I don't think that they forgot about it. I because see that's the other thing is I do feel that there's there is I mean maybe it's I'm just being getting into semantics here, but I do feel like there's constant narrative of like well they must have just forgot about that. No, I think they also just can say well. Let's hope people forget about this. I think there's a difference between hoping people forget and them actively forgetting. I think there's a possibility mm-hmm. they said, okay, we're just not going to do that. Scrap it. Move on. And instead of circling back to give you an answer, they just go, no, just fucking forget it. Just keep going. Forget it. Forget it. Kev? Okay. What? 
Do you want to contribute to the show tonight? Can you not hear me? I can hear you now. No. No, I'm just... <laughs> no, I'm just you listening. Go. Do your thing. <laughs> oh, my God. It's only the first show. <laughs> oh, my God. So, yeah, that happened. So, I guess there's that. Anything you want to say about Dominic and Baron? No, nothing else. Just, uh, you know, I want the Knights of the Lone Wolf to get somebody else. Yeah. I do want to see that. I, I would like to see that actually become a, a good faction. Let's see. We've got Cesaro defeating Daniel Bryan with a sharpshooter. That was just an awesome match, Cesaro and Daniel Bryan. Yeah. Yeah, no complaints. Two great talents at it. You know, what else needs to be said besides where they're going to go with it? I That's like what that I was gonna Cesaro's ask. getting a push. I said it last time. Do you think it's actually going somewhere, though? Because this doesn't feel to me like a story with direction. This feels like some good, strong wins for somebody who we believe can always get a good, strong win. The idea that that mm. Cesaro is underutilized is maybe an argument, but the idea that he's underappreciated or, or that no one understands how good he is, I think, is completely uh, or even underrated, I think, is also arguments that don't make sense to me whatsoever. He's regaled by everybody as one of the best in-ring workers on the active roster for sure. Mm. And some people put him up there for some pretty high honors. So the idea that Cesaro could catch a win over Daniel Bryan was not a surprise to us, but I don't see story in this. This just felt like a good win for Cesaro, but I don't feel the direction. Do you, is there any direction you feel with this one, Kev? Not really. You know, the only thing I was thinking that he was going to get good quality wins over people and, then they, you know, they've just had him go back and forth with Daniel Bryan a few times now. You know, maybe the IC belt, but, you know, that obviously, you know, got its own storyline and everything that it's doing. You know, I really don't see him challenging Roman or anything like that. So, I don't know, hopefully something. Hopefully they don't just throw him in tag team. That's what I mean is like, it seems like they're doing a really good job of making him look strong. And to me, the only thing I could see coming out of it is him getting an icy title shot against a big E, but to lose, to make big E look that much better. Yeah. You know what I mean? Unless they're going to have him take the title off big E so big E can move on to the world. But at the same time, I don't feel like big E's character is ready for the world right now, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I think, I think if they do it right, maybe you know, six months a year, Biggie's character can, you know, be ready for a world title shot. I think he needs to, you know, once again, just get down to business. He be, yeah. you know, goofy and stuff like that, but just be mean in the ring. Not necessarily heel type, but, you know, just be a badass. Yeah, kind of like that shaman, that shamus kind of fucking making sure everyone comes yeah. out bruised. Um. Let's see. Just in time in the chat says Cesaro and Daniel Bryan was short but sweet. Honestly, feels like Daniel Bryan is just putting over talent at this point that he wants to push. Uh, I think that that could be also to make you stop looking at Daniel Bryan a certain way. I, so I think Daniel Bryan can come up and surprise us and be put in a big spot. I feel like that's also part of it. I do feel like that this Cesaro story may be more of a Daniel Bryan story. Now that you bring it up. Um. Let's see, we'll just run through it. Dan, uh, Bailey versus Ruby Riot. I liked all of this. This was pretty good. It was a little short, but it was really good. Bailey got that uh, that that rose plant that was actually really smooth. She's had a, a hard time making that move look fluid in a lot of senses, and this was, I thought, a really good way to do it. We did have Billy Kay on commentary. She got involved some. I don't know. But Bailey did get the win. What do you think about what's going on with with the Riot Squad, Billy Kay and Bailey? I feel like Bailey was just part of a different storyline here and got a win to look strong and move on. Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought. Uh, you know, this whole thing with Riot Squad and Billy, what are they doing? You know, if they actually developed a women's mid card, it'd be cool. But it seems like they're just a floundering tag team, like Power and Glory. I forgot, you know, Mandy yeah. Rose and Dave Brooke, whatever they. Yeah, I do feel like that there was, fuck, less than six months ago, probably two, three months ago, there was a lot of fire behind the Riot Squad being back together, 
and people saying when are they going to get their tag titles? They deserve their tag titles. And I do feel at this point, they do not look like a very good tag team. They look like they got a lot of chemistry together, but they don't catch wins. They lose every singles match they're in now. Like they don't look like a strong tag team. So I don't think that they should be in the tag team title conversation other than they are a tag team. You know yeah, I, mean? I think individually, I feel mm-hmm. like they've gotten so many losses. Yeah. They both came into this tag team with a bunch of singles wins, and now they're getting singles losses and tag team losses. And it's like, wow, you guys went from, like, everybody watching to, what the fuck are we watching? So I do feel bad yeah. for the Riot Squad in that regard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. All right, well. I guess Kev does. I guess Kev does. <laughs> no, I was, I, I, I was just going to say, yeah, I agree. But. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Um, <laughs> All right, what else happened? See, Robert Rude, Dolph Ziggler defeated Otis and Chad Gable. I like the Dirty Dogs as a team. I like that R- yeah. Rude and Ziggler have their own music now. Different music they than either good. one of them. Yes. They came out. They look good. They look like a legit team. Yeah. That was dope. I like that a lot. Otis and Gable getting the yeah. loss didn't really bother me. I don't know what the fuck they're up to. What do you think, Kev? Uh, I really like the Dirty Dogs. I, I think it's a cool, you know, gimmick. Like, you know, perfect for a heel. Just straight to the point. The Dirty Dogs. Mm. And, like, I didn't see uh, Gable and Otis come out. But when I first started watching the match... Uh, Dolph had uh, Gable in a like a headlock, and I thought it was the coolest thing because with Dolph's gloves, I thought he had the wrestling headgear on, like Rick Steiner ish. Oh, I was like, oh, Gable! I was like, this is awesome! I was like, hell yeah! And then I noticed it was just his gloves, and I was like, all right, Gable, you suck again. Yeah, damn it! I like that Otis's gear is starting to look a little bit like Gable's gear. <laughs> like, okay. Mm-hmm. Although that's got a sting for Tucker, dude. They came in together. They made yeah. themselves into a fucking actual tag team. And they're like, all right, let's split it up and put Otis in a different tag team. And Tucker's like, what the fuck did I do? Well, th- I mean, he also <laughs> had a really, really good story with Mandy. And then that's after that. I feel like that's when they broke him up. Yeah. Just to say, Street Profits need to it's... tone it down a huge amount. They were annoying as hell. Oh, yeah, oh, that's right. Totally. They were yes. on yes. commentary. I was... Go ahead, dude. All I'll say is this. No, I'm going to yeah. throw it to you right now. All I'll say is this. they Michael Cole and, and Corey Graves were starting to try to commentate, and the w- window came up with the Street Profits. They were screaming so much and talking over each other and Michael Cole. I just straight up turned off the volume to watch the match. I didn't hear a word that any of them said at that point until the screen went away with, with them in the corner. Go ahead and say what you want to say about it, Kev. You know, 100%. I remember that. You know, I turn it all down. I turn it down, and you know they were just yelling the whole time. Um, what's his name? Dawkins. I can't remember if he kept saying yeah or okay. He just, you know, I think he was yeah. I don't remember, but <clears throat> he was just on like repeat. You know, it sounded like there was a glitch there. Where he's just like, you know, just repeating what he said. They were just yelling. They weren't, you know. They weren't commentating when they're supposed to be commentating. Yeah. I that's the only thing I heard was yeah. the beginning. He was like, Yep, yep. Oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. Here he goes. Oh, he's going. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Okay, okay, okay. And I was like, fuck this. And I turned it off. I think we discussed this before too, that I I don't know if it's like some weird nervous like tick thing or what, but they Doing the same thing over and over does for this character. It's not communicating anything. It's not adding anything. It's getting really old really fast for us. But yeah. maybe that's just us. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I know they have a following, but every time I see them, I just I, I walk away. I walk away from the TV. Yeah, I I can't stand it because he doesn't say anything. He just says anything. So he keeps repeating himself over and over again, louder and louder, just so that way he can have. I don't know. I guess minutes talking, like it's terrible. Just in time, just so you would love to see. That's all it yeah. is. A hundred percent, man. Just filler, and fear of silence at all. Fear of actual thought process. Just keep saying okay and don't let it stop because the second you stop, they'll cut you. Like what? 
Uh, Justin says, I would love to see well, Otis why... be next challenges for the tag team titles. And says, just to see Otis finally get some gold with someone as good as Chad Gable would be fantastic. I have no problem with that. Except that they lost. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, yeah, I'd be okay with them having a title reign. Yeah. But anyways, that's what I was going to say. Like, that's why I just stay silent. I'm sure you don't want me to just say, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, contributing, you know, is, is one thing. You so drunk that you can't even say anything but okay right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and? Dude, they're so bad. <clears throat> Street Profits talking yeah. is so bad. And it was a good match. And, anyway, so. uh, Go ahead. Yeah, and, it, and it's frustrating because I can see what – you know, the talent in Montez, I can see it if, like, yeah, if he just toned it down. Like, I can see him, like, having a singles run and stuff like that. But for them just to be so, like, blatantly annoying, I don't get it. They're legit acting like children. And it's not the kind mm-hmm. of annoying where it was, like, you know, Carmella being obnoxious annoying. Yeah. Where it's funny heel, it's actually odd because they're supposed to be faces to me. Yeah, this isn't a not just heel acting like childish. This is literally two grown men acting like children saying, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. That's yeah. how it feels the whole time. Yeah. It feels like when there's an annoying kid. I mean, you know, you have some. Desperate. Desperate <laughs> oh, is, no, I, I think, the, the word that comes to mind. That's true. Actually, your kids are actually better behaved it's, than them. It's, 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 yeah. it, they're just two stewards from Mad TV. Look what I can do. Yes. It's 100% what they are. Let's see. Well, uh, Hulk Hogan came on. That was a thing. That was weird. That was so weird, man. I guess like, I was her. excited because I thought they were going to do like this big thing about it. And then they're like, oh, Hogan's going to give his prediction, stay around on who Edge should face and stuff like that. And then they did like that two minute clip and just showed it. It was like, okay, this week in wrestling history, okay. Yeah. And then he didn't say anything. Nothing. Nothing of value at all. I mean, people are already not hyped to see him as it is for the most part, but he like didn't even contribute this time. It's like, what was that? I do like that. Mustafa Ali has been reacting the way he has been on social media, but you know how I am. I'm not really into like having to check out social media to understand what I'm watching on TV. But the problem is retribution is the greatest storyline happening on social media right now. So they posted Mm -hmm. uh, their thing about, Oh, up next Hogan speaks. And he just retweeted it and went, wow. (laughs) Like, cause they won't give him time to cut his promos there. So good. Yeah, I think it's great that he you could tell he trolls he trolls social media and oh. then just kind of like bounces that back. Yeah, I love it. Um only two other things really happened here. You had the Intercontinental Championship match. Big E and Apollo Crews and Sami Zayn. I thought the whole match was great. I thought it was good. Everyone did their part. Everyone played their roles. Sami Zayn's awesome. Apollo Crews is is a top-tier athlete if ever there was one and Big E is just so good. So good. The, yes. There, I, I have no complaints about that whole thing. And Big E won, which is good. Although at this point, he now won that triple threat. He's probably going to start breaking away from Sammy and Apollo Crews. And it seems like a pretty shallow intercontinental title picture. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, unless Cesaro's there. But that's, you know, like I said, where are we going to... You know, who's next for Big E? Yeah. Is my thing. Yeah. I'm curious too. But I think we got to move on now. So I saw some people talking yeah. online because of some of the storylines. Like, uh, I think actually they were talking about it because of Dominic and Baron Corbin, where they're like, oh, how long do you think a rivalry should last? It might have even been because of Roman and KO being involved with, with each other the way that they are. Um, how long should these mm-hmm. things be lasting? Do you think like a two month rivalry or a three month rivalry? Like, when should it expire? And I was like, Yo, the best rivalries were all like one or two, three years long, sometimes longer. But 
it was all about the yeah. tease. Like the greatest rivalry in the history of wrestling, I think without question is Austin and McMahon. And they didn't have a match for a full year. And then that match ended in some shit cannery. And they only had like two or three matches over the span of like a good three, four years worth of rivalry. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the good ones are ones that tease you and make you want that match. You're getting, you should be getting angry. You're not getting the match. And the problem I think that we have right now is they're giving us the match early and often. So there's no build. It's, I mean, no anticipation, no foreplay, as it were. Kev, what do you think? Yeah, they're just jumping head first in, and you know, it's <laughs> what I'm at the yeah. swimming pool. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, they just jumping and cannonballing into the deep end. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> what? <laughs> but anyways, um. Yeah, because I even, you know, we talked about it a while back when uh, Sasha and Bailey, when it was, was it Hell in the Cell? Maybe. That they went for, I forget which one, but it was like, hey, they should be built up longer. Like they teased it back and forth and then Bailey kind of just dropped the title and that was it. Yeah, Clash of Champions came up quick and then, uh, and then Hell in the Cell, yeah. But at the same time, that's a story that you could argue goes back six years. Some of these stories, you can't argue that, you know. And But I do agree that it was like, well, they split and now we're getting the match right away. You'd feel like you'd want some more tension built or people trying to – like, heels should not be adamant I, about getting in a match. Not without, a, not without reason yeah. for something they're going to gain. Heels should be saying, no, I'm not wrestling yeah. you. For no reason at all will I wrestle yeah. you. And they should be pinned into the corner where they have to. Where the baby faces should be hunting the match that they're not getting. But what keeps yes. happening is you have these babyface champions who goes, oh, all you got to do is ask. And so the heel goes, oh, well, I'll have one then. Go, okay, well, let's have a match then. It's like, what the yeah. fuck? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's... Sorry, what, anyways, what I was just going to say, I think real quick with the Sasha and Bailey thing, I think my biggest yep. complaint with that was I wanted a bigger stage mm-hmm. for it. It was kind of just... All right, this is happening, you know, in two weeks. It happened, and then that was it. Yeah. But. Yeah. 100%. Way Sketch came through yeah. acknowledging my blue polo. This is a SmackDown referee shirt from, like, a long time ago. <laughs> uh, Justin Time is in the chat, though, saying, I know WWE is known to run feuds for months, but they are running this Owens Reigns feud dry. They've had so many matches that could be considered feud feud enders and they just keep going and i think that's part of it is that's what i mean like kevin should be trying to get matches that he's not getting and like so the idea that like at the end of this i guess we'll talk about it at the end of the show edge comes out roman and edge kind of go back and forth and Roman's demanding. You tell me tonight, you answer to me tonight. And then KO shows up, gives Roman the stunner and leaves. Those are exactly the interactions we should have been getting the past three, four months is Roman refusing Kevin Owens to get a match. So Kevin Owens keeps ruining it. Roman's day. You know what I mean? Every time he's doing a promo, Kevin comes out and hits him with a chair. Kevin comes out, gives him the stunner and leaves. You know what I mean? Like maybe they brawl for a bit, but it, you know, nothing comes of it. Roman's on top sometimes, Kevin's on top other times. But we shouldn't be getting the matches. And we're getting the matches every yeah. single time. And so that's exactly what I mean. This Roman and Kevin Owens feud could be on fire right now. People could be yearning for it if they hadn't just had that match four times in a row. They should be saying Kevin can't get the match because Roman refuses to have the match because he thinks Kevin's less than him and Kevin should be fighting saying you're afraid of me and Roman saying get out of here peasant like not even acknowledging the fear aspect of it but instead Roman goes okay well let's have the match and I'll beat you and then he does <laughs> well and I, th- I think the big reason why it's run its course is because there's no back and forth yeah you know Kevin hasn't got any kind of leg up on Roman you know, even if it was a, a, you know, winner picks the stipulation match, Kevin Owen wins. Cool. He got a win over Roman, you know, whether it's disqualification, something. But it was just like Kevin just keeps going and 
getting his ass kicked. Yeah, exactly. And that's exactly what I mean, is I think this this feud, it's not the time frame, it's the payoff. They're not making us want it. They're just giving it to us. They make you go, they make you interested, and then give you the match right away. Make me interested, yeah. and then don't give me the match. And do that for six months. If this entire time Roman has been champion, Kevin keeps showing up and saying things in his promos. You know what I mean? Like, even before Kevin and, and Roman were even going to match up, if Kevin was cutting promos and being like, well, maybe if we had a better head of the table, and leaving it at that. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. he should be poking at him, prodding him, trying to get this match, and Roman should be denying him. And we should be, we should be at this point building up towards our first Kevin Owens and Roman match. But all that other shit should be sort of happening. Like, that's all I think it is. I think that that's what's missing in that fire. That's why people get burnt out. We get those big matches all the time. Mm-hmm. But other than yeah. that, I like I like well, exactly Edge and Roman <laughs> a lot. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, the last thing. Okay, okay. Yep, yep. That we did. There it that, is. <laughs> there you go. The last thing we didn't talk about on SmackDown, we'll move on to Raw. <laughs> Bianca Belair does show up, and she has a WrestleMania decision to make. Reginald comes out, starts talking some shite. Carmella comes out, talks some shite. And then Sasha comes out, and they all talk shite. I actually really like this segment. I thought Carmella has some of the best facial expressions in the business. <laughs> like... There's a whole bunch of stills you can see of other things happening. And every time you look at Carmel in the background, she's got a very distinct face being made in a very specific direction. And you're like, that's hysterical. I think actually her, her IG story, maybe it was yesterday or today, was which Carmel are you? And it had like six different expressions of her. That's funny. <laughs> I was like, oh, they're all so good. Yeah, she has a very expressive, ex- expressive face, but she also has locked in like subtle facial expressions as well. Like it's so good. <laughs> what did you think of this whole segment, man? Well, and I think that they had them set up where Carmel is like in the background, Bianca and Sasha are kind of facing each other and the original speaking. And you know, the whole time he's speaking, I'm just watching Carmela. Yeah. You know, I was just focused on her and she's like, you know, he was kind of like defending her or defending Sasha. I was like, this is great, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I, you know, I had no problem with the segment and I, you know, obviously we're going to bring it up. I think it's cool that Edge and Bianca haven't uh, committed to who they're going to say yet. Yeah. But I think Bianca... I think she's going after Sasha. I prefer her to go after uh, Asuka. But I think this one should, you know, having them both do it is kind of a little irritating. Yeah. But, I, and I think it's just because normally, hey, I won. Okay, I'm going after this person. Okay, cool. And for both of them to kind of be dragging their feet, it's like, all right, whatever. But, you know, I had no problem with this segment. It'll be cool to see where it goes from here, especially, you know, the elimination chamber match or the title match at elimination chamber, whether, you know, Carmella or Sasha, if they have one, it could be interesting. Yeah. I think we might even get uh Carmella versus Bianca. You know what I mean? Because that's the whole thing too, is mm-hmm. that I like, like you said, the way the Reginald comes out and goes, Bianca, you can't beat Sasha because Carmella can't beat Sasha. So, why would you think you could? Because Carmella is definitely better than you. So I was like, oh, that'd be cool mm-hmm. to get some Carmella Bianca stuff going on. I, I agree. I don't like it when they come out the next night and say, that's who I'm going to face. Because then you're all like, well, if you've locked it mm-hmm. in, then I just, when the person has a title match, it's really hard to believe they might lose it. So <laughs> I yeah. do like that they're like going see, back and forth. Go ahead. Yeah. And I was going to say, this is, you know, and we'll talk about it on Raw. I've been saying it for years. I want a curveball thrown in there. You know, Randy yes. wins the Royal Rumble. Okay, he's going after Bray. We see it. You know, I want the, you know, uh, 
let's just use the women as an example. I want Bianca to say, okay, Sasha, I'm going after you. I'm going after you. And then Bailey goes in and wins it. And then, okay, now there's this feud again between Bailey and uh, Bianca. You know, just as an example, not necessarily what I want to see, but I've yeah. always wanted that curveball moment, and we've never gotten it. We did get it one time, and you're forgetting the greatest curveball of all time. Leading into WrestleMania 33, the Universal Championship put on the line at Fast Lane. Kevin Owens against one young upstart, Goldberg. Goldberg wins the title and takes it all the way to the Mania against oh. Brock Lesnar. That's right. Well, we knew that, that was going right. to happen. No, like... you didn't know. <laughs> yeah, we no. did. <laughs> That was so obvious. Like, what are you talking about obvious. <laughs> that, <laughs> that was that was blatant as the gender uh, championship <laughs> run. Where there's like right before the the title match, there's like a commercial for WWE India. You're like, that's weird, right? <laughs> yeah, it's weird they're promoting that like right now, right? Does that seem yeah. a little bit weird? Yeah. And gender immediately becomes champion. Mm-hmm. And it's like, do you? <laughs> you, yeah. you think, hold yeah. on. Do you think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was ugh. bad memories. No. Uh, Justin does say, I mean, that was one of the happiest times of Lunar's life. GR Lunar, Gabe in the chat. Yeah. One of the happiest yeah. times of his entire life was Goldberg getting <laughs> that title at Fastlane and taking it all the way to Mania. <laughs> Justin does say they should honestly keep Edge and Bianca off TV until they decide because it honestly feels like WWE doesn't even know who they want them to challenge the longer they drag it out. Dude, here's the thing is I get that you're like a big supporter of terrible wrestling takes, but you don't have to bring that shit here. (laughs) (laughs) Because here's the deal. You don't keep them off TV. Keep keep that on us. Yeah. You keep the stuff interesting other ways, right? You have them, like, I mean, the fact that we had seemingly a Carmella feud building with Bianca. You have Sasha and Bianca talking about why they should. The idea that you had the interaction with Bianca and Asuka on on Raw. The idea that Edge can go to NXT and just stare at the title and be like, that's interesting. This isn't something I could even have had a chance for before. Like, this is an interesting conversation. The tease of what they're going to do is, I think, more important than keeping them off TV because... If you keep them off all the shows, it's like, do they not give a shit? By them being present, it just gives you the the visual that they're they're looking, they're noticing, they're they're paying attention. You know what I mean? I'm here and I'm watching. I want to figure out the best decision for me because they're both baby faces. Baby faces don't take the easiest route; they take the most important route. So they're having to assess these champions, and they're putting over all the champions as being equal, like so close in importance that it's not an easy task to choose. You know what I mean? So I liked it if they're out here saying like, well, mm. it's tough to say Drew when I look at Roman. And when I look at Roman, it's tough to say Drew. But then I think about Finn Balor and I go, I have a hard time saying Balor's not on the same level as either one of you right now. Like that makes Balor sound like fucking money, dude. You know what I mean? Mm. So so I do think that the, the their hunt for who they're going to pick is – very important because when they make the decision, it's going to show an importance. Where if they just showed up two weeks later after the elimination chamber, be like, ah, I took the month off, been relaxing in Cancun. I'm here to make my choice. It's going to go ahead and be Drew McIntyre. You go, did they not even give a shit about the other ones? You know what I mean? <laughs> That's how I talk when I come back from yes. vacations, by the way. <laughs> 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 all all I can, right. Sorry, all I can picture is you in a Hawaiian shirt talking with that. Yeah, in Hawaii, not Cancun. That's a good point. I did it in Hawaii. Mm-hmm. I had that big blue Hawaiian t shirt. As soon as we got there, I was like, mm-hmm. I need a Hawaiian shirt. And she goes, Well, what the fuck am I supposed to do with that? And I was like, I don't know. We're in Hawaii. Figure it out. So she takes me to the Hawaiian swap <laughs> meet. We find matching outfits. And I was like, Yes, we can get started now. We were the worst tourists. It was so good. It was funny because her native Hawaiian friends are the ones who told us. Because she had to ask him. She goes, where am I going to find this tacky shit? And he goes, oh, swap me. Let's go. And he took us. 
He's like, you're gonna love this shit. It's tacky as hell. And I get there, and I was like, this is this is perfect. And it was like a like a this stadium. Is exactly like, what I want. <laughs> it was like a stadium, like huge swap meet. Yeah, dude, they did their swap meet like in the parking lot of a stadium. It was like as though they used the entire U of A parking lot for the for football. It's like they used that whole thing, but just for for the swap meet. Or like Kino, like the way the way they do the the gem fair. It was like that. I was like, wow. But it was awesome. I was like, this is exactly what I want. And he's like laughing. He's loving it. Anyway. But yeah, dude, that's how I come back from a vacation. Kevlar, I'm back from Hawaii. Uh, random, but um, Yokozuna special. So good. We didn't talk about it. I thought we were going to talk about the beginning, but yeah, we finally saw it. It's amazing. Great call. Are we doing Smackdown? <laughs> Kev, I think we're doing SmackDown. We can move on from SmackDown. I think we're all cold inside. Kev? Kev? Hello? Oh, no. All right, well. I bet you this dude texts me when he just went down. He's, I mean, he's smiling, so that's good. It's a nice oh, nope. frame. You're frozen. I'll text all right, him. well, got a little inception happening. Did he come back? Oh, Oh, it's us. Whoa! If you're watching live on twitch.tv slash dressing on the rocks, whoa! If you're listening, same thing. Whoa! Um, I did see, we did both see the Yokozuna Idols documentary and, or icons. I apologize, not I, idols, icons. And it was fantastic. It was so good. So well put together. I haven't even heard people who are extremely critical of WWE on literally everything they do who didn't say that this was a really well put together documentary that was fantastic. So if you even sort of liked Yokozuna a little bit, you should watch this. And if you didn't like him, you should definitely watch this and learn what you missed out on. Has he come back at all? This is good. Well, I mean, it's only the first episode. Here's the deal about episode one. Oh. It's just the first episode. Uh, back, I think. I think. Oh, there we go. Let's see his cup. What up? There okay. we go. I'm back again. Woo. Got a good go, Kevlar, back again. Kevlar's back. All right. Yeah, Kev, we were just talking about Yokozuna um, special that we saw. It was amazing. <clears throat> you watched the icons, Did didn't you? Tell me to watch it. Well, didn't... Are, do you hear me, dude? Oh, Christ. <laughs> I think Kev is delayed. Yeah, He's definitely delayed. He's also slow. Also, his internet connection may be an issue. Kev? <laughs> or is technology slow? Yeah, have you... Have, you're, you haven't gotten that new modem run, huh? Nope. You gotta stop living in the fucking mountains, dude. No, um... <laughs> so... As we were wrapping up SmackDown, producer thought it was a fine time to talk about the WWE Network special Yokozuna Icons. You got to watch that, didn't you? Yes, I watched it. It was great. I loved it. Go ahead, talk about it for a second. We already did. Oh, I just, you know, thought it was great. You know, there's a lot of things that was behind the scenes that we, uh, you know, that I didn't know about personally. And it was cool to see that WWE was like encouraging him, like, hey, you know, go lose the weight. You know, we're here for you, this and that. And obviously, we all know how it ended, but I thought it was, you know, like I said. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, Kev. Yeah. Uh... Kev, I, I did not hear that last part of the sentence. You just, just, you just faded. Oh, Can't yeah. wait for the next episode. Hey, 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 hey. Um, I just said I'm excited to show. Yeah. Next episode. So I'll th throw this out there and then we'll talk about Raw. There was nothing else you, you thought you missed on SmackDown, right? Kev, are you there? Kev? All right, well. 
did we can't i mean he's frozen he's here but uh we can't hear anything if you're talking kev so he's not moving either what i mean here the last part what yeah you're not moving i gotta buy this guy's satellite what the hell is going on what did, was there anything you thought we missed on smackdown Welcome to our first show, everyone. <laughs> if this wasn't our first episode, I'd be so pissed right now. I'm sorry. You... So, this is why we need subscribers because we need a new modem. We apparently, have to for buy Kev. him a new modem. We have to buy him a new modem. Like we're running out of options here. This guy lives in a goddamn mountainside. Yeah, this whole time we've been buying drinks, and we didn't know we needed to buy him a new modem. Yeah. <laughs> We've been drinking his internet away. Well, here, I'll tell this one story and hopefully he comes back. I don't know. All right, tell it. We could be we could be in some real dire straits here, to be honest. And I'll tell you this much. If it turns out he watched Raw and he doesn't end up getting to come on here and talk about Raw, he's going to be pissed. He's had to do that whole thing. Um, I was pissed. So I'll tell this real quick while we hope that he comes back. I feel like I should just text Bishop and be like, you are you free right now? <laughs> yeah, this very do second. it. He has probably has better modem, better connection. It's, <laughs> He's further away, but he probably has better he technology. He probably does. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. What story were you going to were you going to tell? If it wasn't our first episode, this is a this is definitely definitely the first episode. So, I lived in Las Vegas when Yokozuna, if you've seen the, the documentary, he lived in Las Vegas at the end of his life and I lived out there uh when I was in high school for just a few months. It was like 6 6 or 7 months cuz I moved in one year I moved from Arizona to Las Vegas and back to Arizona again. Oh wait, and then and then to Alaska. So I moved a lot that that one year. And in there, when I was living in Vegas, I saw the commercial that they even played on the on the documentary of Yoko saying, "Come down and train at the school." And I remember telling my mom, "I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go there." I didn't even want to go there and learn. I just want to go there and meet Yoko. I went through all my my wrestling magazines and found a really cool picture of Yokozuna in the magazine. I was like, "Look, I can go there. I can get him to sign this. It'll be amazing." And I ended up never going. And I remember thinking like. That sucks. I never went. My mom never took me. But I also remembered my mom telling me at one point that she had contacted the school. She had found it. She, I remember she didn't like what t- side of town it was on. She's like, I don't feel comfortable going down there. So if we go there, we can't go there for very long. And I said, okay. Uh, and she had told me that he was currently out of town and that we were going to go when he came back. But as you see in the documentary, he actually died on tour. And I think that that's likely the time frame because I do remember that I was that I remember finding him being excited the idea of meeting him and him dying all within a very very short period of time and thinking I missed my tiny window but it's also possible that I just had no idea when there was when when there was an actual window I might not have ever had a window um yeah we still don't have Kev yeah. It says unboxing now. Yep. Well, let me see if there's anybody who just happens to be around at this very moment. Yep, you let me know. Oh, my God. Clump didn't watch. Oh. oh my god. So welcome to our first show. If you just tuned in, we had some technical difficulties with Kev. And gonna see if he's jumping back on real quick or if we have another spontaneous guest. Yep, yep. He's not even responding to me, dude. But in in Kev's defense, neither is anyone else. 
that's how bad his <laughs> his connection is. I say you just start sending everybody we know that link, and whoever shows up talks about raw. Yeah, Justin's like, oh, live unboxing right now. Splinter Fox coming through. <laughs> Ding dong, hello. Yeah, dude, that's how I feel right now. I wish the doorbell would ring. I wish it would. Well, I mean, you and I can just talk about Raw, I guess. Right. Fuck, here we go. Um, well, let's see. Um, overall, I see the announcements they had made about Raw that we knew about was Randy Orton's going to be facing Drew McIntyre. We knew that... Let's see. I think we knew a little bit about the New Day stuff. Charlotte was going to be facing Larry, uh, Lacey Evans. We knew that. They are going to be facing off. And we knew that there was one other thing. I don't think it was the Keith Lee one. Mm, I think it might be all we knew about. Uh, but going into this Raw, I was not super excited just based off those things alone. And right at the very beginning of Raw, they announced an Elimination Chamber matchup. With Drew McIntyre. Let's see. It's got Drew McIntyre. He's going to be defending his title in the Elimination Chamber matchup against Randy Orton, Jeff Hardy, AJ Styles, The Miz, and Sheamus. And the big thing on this one is that they are all former world champions. I do... I'm never a huge fan of people just being put into matches to be number one contenders immediately out of nowhere. I guess everyone has a stake to the claim just based off the idea alone that... They're former champions, so therefore they should be believable in that regard. But at the same time, I don't know why you put a Jeff Hardy in there when you could have put a Keith Lee in there. I don't know why the Miz is in there if he's got money in the bank. This guy just keeps getting championship opportunity after championship opportunity. It's, he failed at a cash-in before. He failed at Royal Rumble. And now he's going to get an elimination chamber. To make you hate him. That's, I mean, I think just that's that's why the, what the main purpose of the Miz is for, right? Just to make you absolutely hate him. Hmm. I guess when you really break it down, there's nothing more heelish than getting a ton of opportunities and squandering them and doing a bad job with them. You know Be what I mean? I remember because once I saw Miz, I just remember thinking, oh, you are going to hate this. <laughs> so, I mean, I, it was accurate. I mean, uh, there you go. Because you, yeah. you hate everything the Miz does, but you don't hate it enough to not watch it. It's not like Street Profits where you're muting it. You're actually... You you had it on. So. I mute Miz TV a lot. All right, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I was wrong. Yeah, now that you bring it up. Oh, Kev's yeah. trying to get back on, but his work phone rang. Oh, okay. So All he's, right. He's trying to come back, so we'll see if he does. Um. Just a, yeah. No, it's good. So yeah, Miz happened, and then... So I think it's probably a good point. The idea of Miz being in this probably has more to do with the idea of because he has all those opportunities and he's doing a bad job of it, it just makes you hate him more. So the idea that he's going to cash in and get the title, you're going to be pissed because you're going to be like, that's what it took after all this other shit. I hear something. Huh? I hear something. I'm back. Oh, here we go. I'm back again. Gonna tell everybody I have one friend. I got two. No, Clump is not my friend. <laughs> Kev? <laughs> you need Where's a that? new modem, dude. The, fa the fact you come in here laughing is I'm furious. <laughs> yeah. We don't edit the show usually, so I don't want to do it this time, but I might have to. Kev, that was a lot. You're talking edit. about the beginning of Raw. I told the Yokozuna story. You would have loved it. The idea of an elimination chamber involving Drew McIntyre defending the title against Randy, Jeff Hardy, AJ Styles, The Miz, and Sheamus. I've seen people complain about it. I complained about it myself. The Miz getting another opportunity after he failed at Rumble, after he failed at his first cash in. Producer believes. That's just to make you hate him more. So when he cashes it in, you hate him more because he's a heel. Kev, what do you think about all this? Um, I I think Miz shouldn't be in there as well because he's gotten opportunity after opportunity. But at the same time, 
as soon as they announced it and who was going to be in it, I'd rather see any one of those people face Edge before Drew McIntyre at WrestleMania. That's actually a good point. In the chat yeah. real quick, Splinter Fox chanting Bailey. I'm all for it. And he does say, just trying to make the Miz relevant. Nobody cares about the Miz. Just saying, ding dong, hello. Splinter Fox is coming in on my good side tonight. <laughs> That's because we're not mentioning yeah, I'm any gonna, other company. <laughs> I'm going to be buying that guy a shirt pretty soon. By the end of the night, I have a feeling. Uh, Justin does say, I hate them just throwing names into the chamber without qualifying matches. But the pay-per-view being next Sunday, uh, it was just a thrown together because they hadn't put any focus on the show until now. I don't know. Do you think that they really just said, fuck it, who do we have? Or do you think that this was kind of their plan all along? How do we get them to go in there? There was all that stuff with Shane McMahon. And I'll tell you this. What I really got out of this segment, I think there's a very real possibility at like Fastlane or some shit. We get Shane McMahon versus Drew McIntyre. Because Shane McMahon came out there, really put Adam Pierce on 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 notice saying, great idea, you did this, this is all on you. Drew McIntyre comes over and says, Shane, the fuck was that about? And Shane looks at the title a few times, slaps the world title, and says, this is where you get to really show your medal, kid. And gets in his limo and drives away. And I'm all like, is Shane fucking gunning for that thing? Is Shane tired of this stuff? Is Drew McIntyre going to be the one who, quote, kills the Attitude Era? Kev, what do you think? I mean, if Shane comes in and be is our savior from Drew, I would love it. I'm for it. <laughs> like, fuck it. I don't care if Tucker wins it off of him. Just <laughs> anybody. Yeah, not bothered by that one bit. But I mean, I could see it. It'd be interesting. <laughs> All right. Well, I hate you. Let's see, Randy Orton. Jeff Hardy, I don't know why he's in there. I, yeah, I'm surprised they didn't put somebody like a, like a Keith Lee in there. Kevin? Well, this is this is what I'm fearful about with that. Go ahead. Is is that they they mentioned that it's all former world champions. Yeah, and I just hope it's not so Drew can steamroll all of them and say, "Hey, look, I'm better than all of the former champions." That is a hundred percent what I think they're doing here. The second they said it's going to be all former world champions, I went, "Ah, oh, god damn it!" They're putting Drew. Actually, to be honest, the second I heard that Drew McIntyre was in the elimination chamber, and I said, "Ah, oh, shit, who are they going to put him in there to to beat all at once, so we can add to that stupid graphic of all the fucking legends and champions he's beaten before." Because they're trying to build him as this second coming Colossus type. Splinter Fox brings up a really good point. Mm-hmm. I seen the Bobby Lashley slam on Keith Lee. Why is Bobby not in the title picture? He made Keith Lee look like a rag doll. Ding dong, hello. Yeah. Uh, which is absolutely true. <laughs> Justin Time says the one thing I got thinking about was them giving Randy Orton the WWE title again just to add more stakes in the Fiend feud. Pepe and I said I just wanted to see more Firefly Fun House. The only thing I look forward to when we're out. Yeah, we missed, missed out on that. I don't know. I don't see that these people are anybody that they're going to put in there. Because here's the deal is you also have to think about what's next, right? So as much as we loved Edge winning the Rumble, our biggest problem with, with it was, well, I guess, who do we want him to lose to? Because the way they booked these champions, he's not walking out of that rainy with a title. Kev, you brought up a really good point. Drunkenly during the watch along with terrible wrestling takes and in the recap afterwards that you felt, I don't know if you remember this or not. Yep. That you felt <laughs> that this was potentially a move on Peacock's part, putting or not on Peacock's part necessarily, but on on the heels of the Peacock deal to put Edge in the world title picture, and because NBC Universal is the parent company to USA, that who better to put Edge in the ring against than Mister USA himself, the Miz, who's on Cannonball and Miz and Misses and Raw, and is constantly out there wearing USA T-shirts to promote them. This could be a way where we actually end up with a Miz versus Edge title match at Mania. What do you think, Kev? I mean, like I said, I would rather see anyone or Edge face any of the other guys. But, yeah, I mean, just 
like you said, Mr. USA, the Miz, but I would rather Miz cash in on it. So I, I, I you know, I wouldn't be upset if he loses an elimination chamber and then comes out and cashes in and then takes it. Cause that'd be yeah. like an awesome heel move to do, but eh, I don't know. I can definitely see it. And like I said, I, I wouldn't even be upset if it's Jeff Hardy versus edge. Cause I'd be, you know, they had their thing throughout the years. And like I said, any other guy besides Drew. I think there's a very real possibility that Miz does lose the elimination chamber, but then also catches in the same night that drew barely wins the elimination chamber. Mm. And then here comes Miz back again with the briefcase and Miz or Ann Morrison and Angel Garza and probably Bad Bunny and everybody he knows to come out there and stomp on Drew and get that title off of him. I think there's a very real possibility that Drew wins this match and walks out without the championship. And I'm okay with it. <laughs> Dick. Spinnerfox says, I want Edge to win the NXT title and go to every brand and own all of them brands to show NXT is the top brand in all of WWE or WWE. Um, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about, man. You sound insane to me when you say things like that. Sounds like a crazy person talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. Going to an elimination chamber match like that, I'm I'm not I'm not thrilled for it. I don't care about it and I don't know. I don't know, man. We well, ended see, up getting I, Go ahead. I I was gonna say I actually got excited for the elimination chamber match. Because there were, I, to me, there was so many possibilities of somebody beating Drew, even though it's probably not going to happen. So then I'll be disappointed again. But like I said, any of those guys I would love to see Edge against, except for maybe Miz. He's the lowest one on the totem pole. That's true. But yeah, yeah, just get the belt off of Drew and give us as somebody. Yeah. See, the match shouldn't make me excited because I don't see them taking the title off Drew. And I was like, here we go again. They're just going to have Drew steamroll a bunch of people. Can you imagine if they do this Elimination Chamber match like they did uh, Shayna Baszler's? Where he literally just goes in there and takes out everyone with a claymore in like three, four seconds. I'd and be so for pissed. Five minutes. <laughs> and what's funny is I actually can picture that. I was, that was one of the things I was thinking that he's just going to steamroll everyone and it's going to be like the biggest shit on the raw talent. Yeah. I think that's, I think there's a huge possibility of that dude. That's what I think doesn't, that's what I'm not excited about is I think that there's a, a heavy chance that that's what we're getting out of it. So I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, we did end up getting AJ Styles against Jeff Hardy out of this and I did really enjoy that match Kev yeah yeah okay. yeah, uh, yeah I, I like that match as well but if it if they're building once again everyone up just to lose to Drew it's going to be a long couple weeks Here's the deal, too, is I also get it. Drew is, he's got the look, he's got the voice, he's got the in-ring skill, he really does. He's not bad on the mic, I just think that his character is such a cocky son of a bitch. He's so arrogant, and he makes the worst jokes, and he seems like such a prick, and he seems so phony. Here's a dude who literally wins the title, and within a year of having the title, writes a book about being the champion. Who the fuck does that? He's got a book about how he won the title. You've been the champion once for less than a year by the time he started writing the book. Like, fuck you for telling me to cheer this guy. So I just don't understand how he's this baby face that I'm supposed to cheer. And at the same time, he wants to go around and say, oh, me and Undertaker are the only two people to beat Brock Lesnar and Goldberg. Yeah, at the twilight of their careers. 
Yeah. I don't know, man. He's like, I'm only going to fight veterans to show respect. You're like, you mean the same way that Randy Orton was called a legend killer? You're doing it respectfully, but you're doing the same thing. You're a heel. Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. I think that's what but Goldberg he's not was right him. about. Yeah. That's why you're supposed to root for him. That's true. He hugs them afterwards and calls them his dad. Yeah. Fucker. Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> I. What do you think about the New Day versus Retribution stuff? We had Xavier Woods. Uh, and Kofi Kingston against T-Bar and Slapjack. Uh, New Day finally got the win on that one. I know that Woods keeps pushing for a match against Reckoning. I actually like the idea of that just because of the two of them, who they are. But I don't have a problem with this Retribution story right now. I think it's actually being done pretty decently. And I thought putting Mustafa Ali on commentary was fantastic. What do you think about all this, Kev? Um, the match wise, you know, I had never a problem with it. Like you said, Mustafa on commentary was great. You know, just putting a mic in his hand for once that isn't on social media is, you know, awesome. But I just don't know where they're going with it. And I think just like the Riot Squad, I think Retribution has lost so much steam throughout this. It's true. I can't argue that. Dude, they had so much promise, and they're so good online. Oh, God. You know what's funny is that I was arguing with somebody in one of the chats, and the person's mm-hmm. like, they're like, all right, except for the they established. Find- they're like, they're like, if apart from how good T-Bar is in the ring, and apart from how skilled Mustafa Ali is, and apart from Mustafa being an established star, what else does retribution bring? And I was like, you can't start an argument with apart from because then you have to acknowledge that they have that. So what you've told me so far is retribution has <laughs> star power and they have in-ring skill. So you want to tell me what's left to work on, not what do they have at all? Mm. There is a difference, but I do feel like there's something, mm. there's something missing there. That's not connecting. And I do think that a lot of that has to do with the amount of stuff they're showing online versus the amount of stuff that they're showing on TV. Spinner Fox does say, I just hope they keep the Kofi and Ali match until WrestleMania. If not, they're blowing it. Ding dong. Hello. And I believe that 100%. If we do get Mustafa versus Kofi at Mania, that'll be a good, good day. And Justin says, the Mustafa Ali and Kofi Kingston story is getting me reinvested in retribution. Hell yeah. And I really hope we get that one in one on one between them at WrestleMania. Dude, see? All right. Chat bringing me back up. Get me all hyped again. Get me excited. Kev brings me down. Chat brings me up. <laughs> Kev, what do you say? I th- I think you're just surrounding yourself with a bunch of yes men. And they're trying yes. to please you. Yes. No, I mean. Dude, that's been the goal, man. Ali would be great. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, you know, kid, if, I just wanted they, yes men. Had a match at WrestleMania. <laughs> you know, I I would love for them to have a, a match, a good match at Mania. It's just, I think at this point, I'm just so uninvested in Retribution, and I, I almost think it's beyond repair right now. No, you're a dick. You're just being a dick. <laughs> I, hate I hate you so bad. <laughs> Speaking of things you're heavily invested in, Kev, Charlotte Fair. Oh, God. Charlotte Flair versus Lacey Evans with Ric Flair in a war of words before a slap fest. Here's the deal, Kev. I heard people saying that this was Charlotte's best promo to date, IMO, in their opinions, and they thought this was the most real that she's ever been. I saw people say things like, I felt like this was the first time we really got to hear from Ashley and not Charlotte. That's how deep this is getting. That's how emotional this is. I feel like this is next level. And I was all like, Oh shit. But then I watched it because I heard all that before I watched it. And I was like this. And I heard someone else say this. And then I thought you're right Mm -hmm. because someone else said, this feels so good. I feel like this is, like up the pipe bomb. 
And I was all like, what did she say? And so <laughs> we listened to it. I finally saw it and I went, oh, you're right. It is like the pipe bomb. You're 100% worked and that was all character. There was, I didn't feel like there was a, an ounce of authenticity in any of that. I felt like it was just more Charlotte stuff. Like it was fine. It was good. It probably was a better one. She probably sounded a little less robotic, but there was nothing in there that made me think like, oh, we've really broken down a wall here. Kev, what do you think about that promo? Um, I think people are stupid. That's pretty much it. Like it was, like you said, it was a decent promo at best, but I'm not more excited for the storyline you know, with, after that promo, you know, I think it's, you know, what Rick said and, you know, it kind of drew me away even a little bit more with, you know, just, Oh, it's platonic. And, you know, I'm beating up my daughter to help some stranger out. You know, it was, you know, she's supposed to be carrying favors to get ahead. That's her her gimmick. You know, Racy's shit stick. Yep. (laughs) But she drives. Yeah, I just I I don't like the storyline at all. I yeah, shtick. Yeah, I I'm done with it. I I get I think both sides of it. I get people who say, well, it's pretty decent. I mean, Ric Flair's always been that way, and you're like, yeah, but he's like a hundred, and he seems to be fucking around with Lacey, whose husband, although ghoulish, is constantly on Instagram with her. <laughs> I feel that it's not quite fair. So I get that side of it. I get the I don't care because of this and that. But it also like I do get where this puts Lacey in a good spot. And I do think the match wasn't terrible. And I heard someone else say they thought it was maybe Lacey's best match to date. And I think that would be difficult to argue without putting up other matches to watch it against. Because they both did good in the match for the most part. There was a few like Things here and there where you're all like, are they, can they not hear each other? Is Charlotte just refusing stuff? There was definitely times where Lacey did a bunch of things and Charlotte's like, here's the time where I'll kip up after everything you do. And you go, oh, because you don't register pain at all. You're not human. So I get that too. But I do think that at the end of it, Lacey didn't look. That's thing anyways. I know, dude. I know. Here's like she's like fucking she's like a road warrior, but I do think that Lacey does look decent in here for the most part. I do think that it was shitty that it dissolves into Lacey just getting her fucking ass kicked by Charlotte till the ref has to call the match. I didn't like that the ref had to call the match because she was slapping and shoving the ref, and then Charlotte tells the ref to open the ropes for her, and he does. I wish the ref was like, yeah, go fuck yourself, Charlotte. Guess what? You slapped me in the face, you shoved me, and you told me to get the fuck away from you. Guess what? I'm away from you. Get through the ropes on your goddamn own. (laughs) Fuck you. I wish that ref would have stood up for himself a little bit. Ref Bennett. He's a good dude, though, and I get it. He's just trying to do it. Okay, this is the part where I do this thing. I'm like, yo, if your character shoves me, I'm I'm not doing you favors now. Like, she stood there by the ropes and was like, open the ropes. Did you hear her yelling? I wish he just walked out the other side. Just get out of the ring and walk out by the commentators and go around. Get the ropes. No! I'm not gonna. <laughs> just open the ropes. Here's the deal. Yeah. <laughs> Let me. I don't know how to tell My you. job's done. I'm done for the night. I'll leave. Baby. I'm out. <laughs> You're strong. Yeah. I seen your muscles. I've got faith in you. <laughs> Peace out. Here's what I wonder. Let's hit the chat real quick. Uh, because I think that just in time might, might be onto something here that I was going to bring up anyways. And I don't want to, I don't want to pretend like I'm stealing stuff here. So I'm just going to credit whoever says it. Let's see. Justin says, Dear God, if if this leads to Lacey beating Asuka and having her and Charlotte go at it at WrestleMania for the Raw Women's Championship, my God, double shot of Bleach, please. This feud is nauseating. Bleach is delicious. They have plenty of flavors. Miss Fabtina says, Ha ha ghoulish. Oh, that's fucked up. Uh, Fabtina says... (laughs) 
That's totally what Marsh <laughs> thinks will happen. Uh, Splinter Fox says, Kofi versus Ali in a cage match to keep everybody from interfering WrestleMania, uh, but I feel that they dropped the ball. I do, uh, yeah, that could be good. I mean, I really do think that Kofi and Ali is, is going to be fucking phenomenal when they finally put them together. And Justin says, all just to garner sympathy for Charlotte. That's true, too. You can't make me give a shit for her. You've been trying, and I just I don't have it. And Justin Time says, Charlotte is the... D- <laughs> okay. So Charlotte is the dumbest person ever. She just handed Lacey that title match. <laughs> Just, which is true. I can't argue that. So the whole idea was that if Lacey wins this, she gets a title match with Asuka. So Charlotte gets disqualified by beating shit out of the ref. The ref is Charlotte's valet all of a sudden. But now Lacey has a match with Asuka. I do think, I truly do think, we are going to end up in a world where Lacey takes the title off of Asuka at Elimination Chamber with the help of Ric Flair cheating for her. But I do think that at Fastlane... We have Charlotte take the title off of Lacey. And now you have Bianca and Charlotte. Instead of Bianca and Sasha. That's my fear. This is my nightmare. Kev, what do you think? Uh, uh, that is a nightmare. I don't think Charlotte and Bianca would, would be interesting. Uh, like I said it before, I, I do want Bianca to go after the Raw Wiz title because I think it'd be great if Becky comes back and says, hey, I never lost this. I had to give it up, you know, and then we get Bianca and Becky, you know, down the road. And I would love to see that. Like, that, I, you know, that's like a wet dream. Like, it'd be amazing. But, yeah, I, I mean – I don't know who Bianca would take the title off of. Yeah. I don't want it to be Charlotte. I mean, if she beats Oscar, that's fine. Unless it's to beat Lacey so that there's a face and heel going at it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I do think that Bianca Sasha is what everybody wants. And I think that that's not bad at all by any means. Did I say here what my concern was about Sasha and Bianca having a match together? Or did I say that offline somewhere? Okay. I don't know. Here's my concern about Sasha and Bailey. I don't know. I wasn't on. Not Sasha and Bailey. Sorry. Sa- Bailey is always on my mind. What are you going to do about it? I mean, even, even Splinter Fox says it best in the chat. Who is Charlotte? She's no Bailey. Ding dong. Hello. I'm, you're correct. You're absolutely correct. Um, a couple things happened in the chat. Kuro says, Twitch gave me a condom ad before your stream loaded. I said that was by my request. And then Justin said, how coincidental, especially since we're on the raw part of the show. It's disgusting. Everyone here is disgusting. Um, I my My concern about Sasha versus Bianca is there is so much hype behind it. They're going to have a lot to live up to already. And I do think that both of those talents, because they're so good and so athletic, that their biggest fault in the ring is sticking to their guns and trying for things that they're not perfect at, hoping that it just goes perfect. I do think they try. I think they try and I think they practice and I don't think that anybody's just out there willy-nilly. But I do think that people refer to Sasha matches have being full of botches, and I don't think it's because Sasha's bad or anything. I think it's that she's trying for something that she can't nail 10 out of 10 times, and it just doesn't land, and then she sticks to her guns and tries to make it land. But I think that what makes her matches so good is that she's typically in there with someone like a Bailey who can take that moment and that flub and turn it into a different thing. We need to transition out of this miss step and into an actual other thing. And I think Bianca's had the same fault where I think she tries for things. They don't quite land right. They don't quite look right, but she's in the ring with someone else who can say, but we can make it into this now. That's not to say that they're they're not top talent by any means. I think that they, I mean, they got big appetites for how good they are. And I think we all do. My fear is that if they both don't have an anchor that way, that we could end up with a whole lot of weirdly missed things, potentially. It either will go off without a hitch, or they're going to slip on one thing, and then both parties will likely panic 
and we'll get a whole bunch of anxiety driven missteps. Does that make sense? What I'm saying, Kev, am I way out of line here? No, I, I can definitely see that. I think that, you know, a lot of just players in uh, other sports, you know, they try too hard, which creates, you know, mistakes and turnovers and stuff like that. And I think that if they both go down like a, like a snowball effect, like a slippery slope, it's just going to get worse and worse. And they might even, you know, go down as one of the worst matches ever. If that, happens. you know, it can also go down as one of the best matches ever, but I can see the, the fear there of that happening. Yeah, and that's a really good point. And my lack of watching sports, it makes it hard for me to think if I'm being too hard on people in that way. But you bring up a really good point. You see it sometimes where people go for shots. You're like, what are you doing? You're trying to hot shot this. And then it makes for just a ridiculous thing. And it goes over and like, well, if you were, if you played it a little safer, you know what I mean? Uh, and that's absolutely true. That happens in all sorts of sports. And I, again, in no way of trying to downplay the absolute skill of either one of those two talents. Because I do think, like you said, Bianca versus Sasha could be the greatest women's match of all time. But that's the pressure we're also putting on them. And they happen to be two human beings. So by putting that level of pressure on them could result in some hot shotting and some missed moments. So you could have, because the hype is so big, the biggest disappointment of all time. And that's that's my, my fear is that if they do it, I want them to hit that 10 out of 10. And I think it's possible. But I don't think it's a guarantee. And that's my concern. Um, let's see in the chat a little bit. Uh, Splinter Fox brings up a good point. Bailey versus Belair for the title at WrestleMania. One more time. Ding dong hello. Uh, Kiro just got a lube ad. Sounds great. Mm. Splinter Fox says, hey, we want some Bailey. I agree. <laughs> and Justin says, hey, Bailey. Oh, oh I want to know. Would you be my girl? Um, Blender Fox says no match can beat Bailey versus Banks Ironman match, and that's just it. Is 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 I, I honestly feel that was their best. I know a lot of people think it was the other one, and I do I do agree with that. That to me that was the greatest. I do understand the belief that Bianca and Sasha could do that, but my fear is that they won't because of the pressure. Kev, we're a little off track here. So let's bring it back around. <laughs> the idea of Lacey taking the title off of Asuka so Charlotte can take the title off of Lacey. Do you think that's the direction they're headed? I sure hope not. <laughs> but at the same time, why are, you, are they investing so much in Charlotte and Lacey if it's not for a bigger picture? You know, I don't think that they're trying to get a women's mid card between them especially because charlotte is charlotte and she'll throw a fit and want to go back to the top i'm surprised she hasn't already mm -hmm. and unless you know and you know the one thing that rick flair said during this promo and i thought it was a great idea and i could actually see it if they were a tag team because mm -hmm. Lacey and charlotte make more sense as a tag team than uh, Charlotte and Oscar. Yes. Yes. But, but yeah, I just, you know, like I said, I hope it doesn't go that then, you know, I, yeah, I just don't see Lacey, uh, Bianca. So it probably would be Charlotte and then ugh, it's ugly. Now, but here's the deal. Let's say that Bianca does go for Charlotte. Or not Charlotte, for Sasha. Let's say Bianca says, yep, it's Sasha. You guys are right all along. And let's say that that shit does happen, mm -hmm. that Lacey takes the title and Charlotte takes the title off of Lacey. You don't think they would actually do Lacey and Charlotte at Mania, would you? Someone else would have to come in. And at that point, are they going to bring back Becky to do a Becky Charlotte at Mania? Which, that's not the one-on-one -on -one any of us ever asked for. I, I think as much time as they're investing in the Lacey Charlotte thing, I could see them going down that road. That made a kickoff. 
<laughs> put it on the kickoff. Here's what I say, though. If you do have Lacey and Charlotte tag team, I believe you call them the step family. <laughs> and I believe you put that over on commentary. You're like, stepmother uh, and stepdaughter step into the ring. Oh, right? gosh. Right? Sounds like... <laughs> nah. <laughs> I just don't even have a response to that. <laughs> Stop. Uh, Spoon Fox does say Asuka is being left behind, which is a shame. And I think it's 100% true, accurate, and there's nothing mm-hmm. we can do about it. He says, first, the five foot Disney woman child destroys her. <laughs> what? Asuka? Or not Asuka, Alexa. Alexa. That's good point though. Alexa has been a bit Disney like. Yeah. Uh, and if Lacey wins, it's such a shame. Just put Bailey versus Asuka at Mania. Ding dong. Hello. I'll be honest with you. I want Bailey in a WrestleMania match so bad, and I don't know how we get there. And I think that every one of these matches that's, that Splinter Fox has mapped out is just a fucking dart at a fucking globe. Makes sense. Put Bailey and Asuka. Bailey and Bianca. Bailey and Sasha. Bailey Lacey. You can put Bailey with anyone in there, and I think it's a better match than a lot of what we're looking at right now, prospect wise. Personally. Becky comes back, Bailey mm. attacks. Becky comes back, Bailey attacks. <laughs> That's your thing. I mean, I, wasn't it Becky's birthday that, that Bailey smashed her with a chair? So there you go. Uh, Justin does says, I wouldn't doubt them to drag that feud out till Mania. And Spinner Fox says, Oh, what about Bailey and Rhea? That'd be so dope, too. So, I don't know. I guess there's a lot going on there. And I guess that, you know, the funny bit is, is as much as we talk about the Raw Women's title has jack shit going on, we just talked about a lot of propositions for it that they could go in, which maybe means because that there's no direction for it, we can see a lot of opportunity there. Or maybe it means that there's so much there to do that we just don't see the direction they're going. Right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, th- this is one of the problems I have with the women's champion also being the tag team champion is because, you know, one of the belts has to take a back seat and the route that they went with Charlotte Oscar, you know, I couldn't tell you the last time Oscar defended the title. No clue. The raw women's title. And it's, it is a shame because Oscar is a great talent and she's, you know, you know, the champion, obviously, and they're just not utilizing her. They're just like, eh, be Charlotte's side piece. Yeah. Oscar is Matt Brown levels of worldwide phenomenon. <laughs> My favorite flavor is butthole. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I guess we'll see where how it plays out. We'll see where it goes. Kev, what did you think about the Miz interrupting Edge? Which Edge is promos, dude. Fuck, ah, man. So I was not an Edge fan growing up significantly. I remember really liking the idea of Edge when he was like that weird brooding dude in the where they would even play the music and show him in the audience. Remember that? You think you know me. And it would just show him in the audience and in weird places and you're like I don't I don't know yeah. you. What are you talking about? Remember how confused I was? You think you know me. No, I don't think I know you. <laughs> you think you know me. I'm mysterious. I Try don't know you. <laughs> what do you mean? I've never seen you. You think you know me. I have no <laughs> idea who you are. Tell me. It was this fight I had with the TV all the time. First off, don't put words in my mouth. Secondly, I have no idea. No idea. He might as well have had music just played. I think you're Canadian. No. No. No one else knows you. So, anyways. I didn't know who Edge was. And his his music mocked me for it. You think you know me. I don't. <laughs> Fucking tell me. Please. So, I remember liking that version of Edge. I remember enjoying the brood because the brood was the brood. But I also think... Mm-hmm. That by the time he started becoming a rated R superstar, I was a lot less invested in him as a character. Because by that time, I felt like a lot of that HLA stuff 
the the mud match things, those consummating the marriage stuff, although I was still relatively young in my teenage years, or maybe I was getting towards my older teenage years, I do remember starting to feel like that was a bit played out and a bit too much. Because I remember, I remember rolling my eyes at the HLA storylines when they were promising hot lesbian action during the show. I remember even as a teenager being like, Fucking, come on, who, who are we targeting here? What puberty-driven teenagers are we going for here? So I do remember being checked out by the time the Rated R Superstar came around because I was a bit over that. I'm not saying I'm like mature for my age. Just for whatever reason, I was kind of done with that shit by that time. So, all that to say, Edge now has me the most invested I've been in most characters I've seen since I got back into wrestling. He is so good and compelling and I'm fascinated and in love with this character. And it's so cool because it's also a character that I liked a while back but wasn't invested in. So from a fan standpoint, it's nice to not only be reintroduced, but to become fully invested in someone I wasn't before. That in mind, that leads to The Miz coming out, Damian Priest, Bad Bunny, Angel Garza. Kev, what do you think? Go! Uh, I don't know what they're doing with Bad Bunny. It's weird. I thought it was just a one-off at Rumble, and now he's... Going to win the 24-7 title soon, I have a feeling. Maybe next Raw. But I mean, if Peter yeah, Rosenberg can afford Garza's it, then Bad Bunny can definitely Miz afford it. out of nowhere. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, Garza joining them doesn't make sense. It's cool that, you know, he's actually getting TV time, so I'm kind of okay with it. But... I just don't like. I'm glad Priest is up on the main roster. Like he's an awesome talent. I think he outgrew a lot of NXT, so to move him up was a great move. I just hope that they don't squander it with him. So here's my deal with Bad Bunny. Although I was not particularly personally impressed by his performance at Royal Rumble, I am particularly impressed by his constant and obvious love for the business and respect for it too i know someone pointed it out and i remember thinking that was cool but at the end of the day let's all be very very aware that we are not insiders we are all fans who think we know everything and we don't but it was nice to see a celebrity who wiped his feet on the ring apron corner before walking into the ropes that was cool because that shows that bad bunny really wants to do things a certain way I thought his crossbody was fantastic off the top. I don't, I know, I saw, I know a lot of people were not real thrilled with him doing a crossbody to Miz and Morrison. However, that was leagues mm. better than Snoop Dogg doing a frog splash. Snoop's got a thing or two to learn, if you ask me. But I also think that there's a huge chunk of yes. what Bad Bunny is doing that's not for me, and that's completely okay. Because what I do see is. Someone who's being successful in their role without taking the shine off of the people around them. Bad Bunny isn't the star in that segment. Damian Priest looks like a star. And Bad Bunny looks at Damian Priest like he's a rock star. Like, watch da- watch Bad Bunny's face when Damian Priest is walking out there with him. He can't stop smiling. He's so excited to be standing there. He makes Damian Priest look like a special person to be around. And that's fucking cool, dude. They're also from the same place, like geographically. They have the same hometowns kind of deal. So that also leads me to believe that the amount of people who like Bad Bunny, hometown hero type, are going to see what he's doing and say, oh, Bad Bunny's one of us. He's hanging out with another one of us who's also being successful. Let me watch what they're up to. There was stuff online talking about Bad Bunny shirt sales being, the, the being I think, four out of the top five top-selling merch items this month that number like five or some shit was Roman Reigns and the top four was Bad Bunny. I mean, that's just good business for WWE. They're pro- they're printing out Bad Bunny shirts and selling them like crazy. Because here's the other thing. If you're a Bad Bunny fan, how dope is it if you even sort of like wrestling or even don't 
that he's got WWE official shirts. You might grab that. I don't want to go on a dialogue here or a monologue, Kev, but there's a little bit more to tell you. A friend of mine who who actually has been a fan of Bad Bunny for quite some time told me that one of the reasons they're a fan of his is because in his music, he does mention wrestlers fairly often. The same way other rappers will quote and make comments and and references to pop culture, Bad Bunny does with wrestlers. And I thought, that's really fucking cool. So here's a dude who's a super fan, really giving the shine to, to Damian Priest, bringing eyes, making money, and not stealing the spotlight. Dude, I got no no complaints. And even the way that he handled the whole money in the bank briefcase to get Miz and Morrison thrown out looked slick. It looked smart. It looked natural. He didn't look hokey or weird or corny doing it. He didn't look like a celebrity playing a part in a thing. He looked like someone who was a part of that match trying to even up the odds some to make it more fair. It looked real. Not like the hired Shaq. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This wasn't Shaq being with water thrown in his face that you could see a mile away. You know what I mean? I don't know. That was a lot. That was a lot. Kev? Yeah. Go. (laughs) (laughs) I, you know, I'm not familiar with Bad Bunny at all. I just, the one Corona commercial that he did with Snoop Dogg, that was kind of funny. And Corona. But, you know, I, in the reverse sense, you know, you know, now I'll have eyes for Bad Bunny and definitely check out some of his, you know, songs and discography and see if, you know, he connects with me. But I, I, ex- yeah, I see exactly what you're saying, Marsh. And I think it's, you know, it is, he's doing a lot better than any other celebrity has with these his movements and stuff like that. It does seem fluid and natural. So, you know, yeah, maybe I just need to watch it with an open mind. Cause the Booger T song or performance at Royal Rumble, I wasn't a fan of. So I was kind of like, all right, he's done. He did his thing. Get him out of here. But yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll check him out some more. Uh, mostly his stuff's in <laughs> Spanish. Is your Spanish that good, man? Uh, sometimes. <laughs> right. I've seen you break into Spanish from time to time, but I don't think you're clump levels of Spanish. Let's say, I'm going to hit the chat real quick. Spinner Fox brings up a great point. Edge is great, but he's no Bailey. Ding dong, hello. No complaints. No complaints. Uh, Justin does say, not the biggest fan of the Bad Bunny thing, but I'm willing to give it a chance and see how it turns out. And Spinner Fox says, Punishment Martinez got a very popular manager. Justin Time does say, it's the same how everyone reacted with about Pat McAfee. After we saw what he could do, we wanted more of him, so I think that we need to see what Bad Bunny can do. It might end up being the same as Pat McAfee's situation. I think it's possible. I don't think that we're going to get a Pat McAfee-level performance out of Bad Bunny. And the only reason I say that is because Bad Bunny's not an athlete to begin with. Pat McAfee has been historically a form of an athlete in the shape of a punter. So... Kind of, but also Pat McAfee got drunk one night and bought a ring and was like, well, now I have a wrestling ring. I better do something with this. And so he's been training, honestly, for years and years and years and even got Rip Rogers to train him. So Pat McAfee had been training for years before anything happened in the ring at all. I think Bad Bunny's learning it as he goes starting now. And I do think that people did had no idea and mm-hmm. didn't really believe McAfee when he was saying, yeah, I, like four years ago I bought a ring and I was drunk and now and then it showed up and I built it and now I just play in the wrestling ring all the time. People are like, but no way. But he did. I believe he did. Spinner Fox does say Benito Antonio Martinez, Oxio, a.k.a. Bad Bunny, wants to be a wrestler. This is why he respects wrestling so much. The rumors he is training in the PC for WrestleMania, who knows? And you know what? And I'm fine with all that too. If he shows the res- if if I mean, and who the fuck am I to say if he shows the respect? If I see someone who's putting their all into it, I'm going to be happy. If I see someone calling it in, I'm not going to give a shit. And right now, I feel like he's putting his all in that. I think that's all I really have to say about that. I don't want to talk all night about Bad Bunny. But it sounds good to me. Kev, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely, you know, behind somebody 
where this is not his forte and if he's putting a hundred percent into it then let's do it it's looking good compared to other people's you know 10 percent that they normally put in so yeah let's let's see where it goes this dude is not here to sell icy hot sprint fox says he need to be trained by bailey ding dong hello yes if you want some real stuff going on do you think we actually though get to a point where it's damian priest and bad bunny against Morrison and Angel Garza because Miz will be in the Mania main event against Edge. I th- I don't think that'll be on at Mania. What you think? Bad Bunny's gonna wrestle for free, that... idiot. Well, I can I can see that being a match leading up to something. All right, but I I don't think it, it's a, a Mania match. But then again, right. you know, Mania like they did last year with two nights, there were some theatrical, you know, matches. Maybe Bad Bunny has a theatrical match, which wouldn't be terrible. Say. They should do it, though, theatrical, though, um, not like cinematic, but like truly like Broadway theatrical, where you can see the cables and stuff as he flies around like Peter Pan did back in the day. <laughs> Just in time to say six-man tag possibility at WrestleMania. Garza, Miz, Morrison versus Damian Priest, Bad Bunny, and Booker T. I'd be out of your fucking mind. That guy comes from terrible wrestling takes. There's no doubt in my mind. It's so easy to tell those ones <laughs> when they come through. Uh, Spider Fox says that's the rumor tag match. They always have to have a celebrity at Mania, so it could happen. I do believe that could happen. I do believe that terrible rumor is coming from Terrible Wrestling Takes podcast, though, because that guy comes up with some crazy shit. Um, Kev, as we move it along, Keith Lee versus Riddle. I don't got a ton to say about this other than it was very, very good. Bobby Lashley came out looking like a fucking beast as well. I don't know where they're going with Bobby Lashley, but why the fuck is it not the moon? Yeah, 100%. They, you know, I think the way he manhandled Keith Lee at the end of that, like, hopefully he does, you know, go, you know, down the line, go for the world title. He's huge, you know, I've always been a big fan of him, and I would love to see him do it. Uh, Watching Keith Lee interact with Riddle, the only thing that made me, like, made me start thinking about stuff is I kind of want Keith Lee to turn heel. I think if he even joins the Hurt Business, I think that'd be, you know, amazing. It could be great. Yeah, seeing Keith Lee get fed up and being like, look, I've been trying to be a nice guy. I know I'm the new guy around here, and I've been trying not to step on any toes, but I'm getting real fucking tired of stepping on eggshells in response. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And to see him pick up with MVP, if MVP is like, hey, let's get you fitted for a suit. Like, let's do it. Let's do it. Because I do think that one thing that Keith Lee could stand to use is a mouthpiece who can go like an MVP. Because I don't think that Keith Lee is garbage on the mic by any means. But I do think that the way that he speaks can come off a little condescending so it can move into a heel role very well. And I do think that him being careful with his words and being more plotting with the way he says things could have a lot more impact than when he gets a little bit wordy. Starts to feel like he's trailing a little bit. Although I will say that this conversation he had with Matt Riddle back and forth, one of the better ones from both of them. I did not have a lot of complaints about the way Matt Riddle came off here and the way that Keith Lee came off here. I I liked both of them a lot. You know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, it it kind of highlighted each character in a way. But, like I said, saying this, I just wanted to... Like, I think I would enjoy Keith Lee as a heel a lot more than a face at this point. I agree. Spinner Fox does say Bobby whooped everybody. Bobby will be the only one to, to beat Drew. And I actually think that that's a, not a bad way to go. I think if you build it up right, I, don't even yeah. think, I think you could build it up shitty and it'll still work. You could have Bobby dethrone Drew and it could be fucking great. And then you build towards Bobby and Brock. Yeah, I mean, SummerSlam, I would like to see it. 
Yep. Yep. Uh, just in time does say, I think Lashley drops the title elimination chamber, but doesn't get pinned to keep him looking strong. What? He has to get pinned. That's the elimination chamber. You only get eliminated it's by a pin threat. or submission. The elimination triple chamber is six minutes. What are you talking about? It's Keith already- Lee, Matt Riddle versus Bobby Lashley for the U.S. Oh, Lashley. That's what he's about. I okay, Lashley. Uh-huh. Bobby Lashley. I hear you. I hear you. Lashley. Okay. I was thinking Drew Mac and Fart still. My apologies. All right, let's start over. Let's start over because of Elimination <laughs> Chamber threw me off. Justin Times coming in here with his terrible derailings. Uh, I think Lashley drops the title. Lashley drops the title at Elimination Chamber, uh, but doesn't get pinned to keep keep him looking strong. We seriously need Lashley to move on to something better. The only thing that would make sense is a Mania match with Lesnar. That'd be so fucking dope. That'd be so good. Can you imagine too? Lashley think- loses at Elimination Chamber, right? And at Fast Lane. Oh no, that doesn't work. What if, all right, Lashley's matches early on in the show. He loses at the he loses the title kickoff right before kickoff, right after kickoff. I don't care. Beginning of the show. Drew McInfart is going to headline. He always does. That's what McInfart does. That's McInfart's style. That's his smell, his stink, his funk. Bobby Lashley finds Jeff Hardy in the back before Elimination Chamber and rips his arms off and beats him to death with his own arms. Not Jeff. What? Do it to Miz. Or Miz. Miz works too. Miz works great. And then you get Lashley in the Elimination Chamber. Because he just beat the shit out of somebody to death and Adam Pierce doesn't know how to book a show. CEO, owner, Adam Pierce. Loser to Roman Reigns, as we call him. What do you think? You think that could work? Mm-hmm. Spinner Fox doesn't like that. Says no. Says keep that fool far, far away from wrestling. Yeah, I mean- uh, nah, take out Jeff. I like that. <laughs> I could see that. Have have Bobby Lashley, the man of the hour. You could have him lose the title early on and then weasel his way into the Elimination Chamber and then you got a real fucking threat. Although Jeff Hardy's the only heel or the only babyface in the match besides Drew, which I think is notable. But you could have Lashley do some shit and get in that match and come out on top and win. Then you could have Brock Lesnar show up and say, I'm pretty curious right now. And Lashley go, fuck you, dude. I've been asking for you for like two years, dude. Fuck you, dude. That's how I think Bobby Lashley talks. Man of the hour. My mouth is out. And then Kane Velasquez joins in in a triple threat. Yes. Abuyaka, abuyaka. <laughs> Alright, sorry. Sorry. Um, all right, I'm okay with all that stuff. Uh let's see. I guess moving right along. Yeah. Right? You good with that? Only two more things to talk about here. Yeah. We got Naya go. and Shayna Baszler's corner. What? No. Hold on. Table match. Naya versus Lana. Shayna in one corner and Naomi in the other. This match had a whole lot of people talking <laughs> Kev what did you think about Nia Jax getting shoved through a table having her hole ripped in half and calling Naomi Trin go ahead go I it just shows that like, there's, there's not much professionalism <laughs> with Naya. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Why do I have to be the one talking about Naya's hole first? I mean, uh, it was the talk of the whole night. I mean... <laughs> the whole universe... That was the whole. Um, I will say it was the tone uh, of I mean, the whole of Twitter. <laughs> Anyways, Cap's gonna cough up a hairball. To me, like I don't know. I'm not on social media. <laughs> no. 
I'm not on social media, you know, that much. So I, this match kind of, to me, came out of nowhere. Like, I don't know if it was announced beforehand or what, but this seems like this should have been on, you know, even Elimination Chamber. Yeah. Like, it just kind of came out of nowhere. It was, I guess, okay to see Lana push, mm-hmm. you know, Naya through a table. Yeah. But then afterwards, you know, you immediately met uh, Shayna and Naomi, which was fun. But once again, it came out of nowhere. And yep. just going back to Naya calling Naomi Trin, it's that annoyed me more so than anything. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't thrilled by a lot of that. I'll be honest. I think a lot of people who are celebrating – Nia Jax screaming my hole after she does a leg drop on the hardest part of the ring are probably the same people who say the inner circle are the greatest faction ever be in the wrestling business. I think Nia Jax screaming my hole is evidence that WWE is willing to cater to the AEW fan base. (laughs) See if you can't get Cut, cut, cut. <laughs> Kick up a little bit of dust with that one. I think that that there it is. Yeah, I wasn't super impressed with a lot of it. Although it was good, it was good storytelling. To be honest, it was a decent match. No one looked like shit in it. Everyone was really hamming it up and playing their part. And and Lana got her comeuppance, and so it was really cool because I think now Lana can move on. But I do think that that puts us in a position now because Naomi got the win over Shayna and Lana got the win over Nia that we're going to see Shayna Nia versus Lana Naomi for the tag titles. And to be quite honest, if you put those titles on Naomi and Lana, I'm going to be feeling real confused. As much as I think that both of those people holding on to tag titles could be cool in, in a sense, I don't feel like they're an established tag team. But I will say... With as little as they have tagged together, they do seem much more supportive of each other than Asuka and Charlotte ever did. And they were tag champions, so I guess there's that. Yes. But the other thing is, last week, they beat them to earn a title shot. Or they won the triple threat match. So the title shot was already approved. They are already out there. Yeah. Is that it? That's all. (laughs) And scene. (laughs) Uh, I do like seeing Naomi get good wins over Shayna, although Shayna's been pretty watered down at this point. So we'll see where that goes. We'll see where, where, where it goes over to. I'm... I mean, I'm just not super entertained by Nia overall, and I do think a lot of people are really feeding into this whole business by giving. Uh, I mean, Nia Jax, my hole was oh. trending yeah. on Twitter. Yeah. People were all about it. My favorite one, if I had to pick a favorite, oh man, why does your pizza look like that? Mine looks like this. <laughs> Sorry. She made the most amazing pizza for herself. Um, <laughs> I'm saying enjoy it. it looks like the pesto. The chicken pesto. Uh, producer living large. I know, I can't eat <laughs> what? Wait, wait, what? What'd I say? I'll go back to my chips. Um... <laughs> No, I want you to. I think you do. I swear to God, dude. No. Um, <laughs> a little derailed on that one. <laughs> Kev, what was uh, what was the tone of things? Just a tad. Yeah. <laughs> you were, you were talking That's about bad. your favorite Naya hole. Oh, the best Naya hole gimmick I saw online was they were showing, it had her scream, my hole, and then it cut over to the seven dwarves, and I went, my hole, my hole, and then it goes, hi, hole, 
hi ho and they do the thing but every time it cut to to hi ho it would cut in her audio so she go my ho my ho and it goes off to work we go <laughs> they did a good job with that one i'm gonna be honest <laughs> I was like, this is not the show I thought it was going to be. I'm witness it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Splinter Fox does say, WWE needs to start forming women's tag teams in, from green talent. Let's hope they have that with the Dusty Classic. I agree. Although they already destroyed the only two teams they had that were in there as teams. Let's see. Justin does say, if there's ever any possibility of the world title being merged from the bland. Whoa. What the fuck? If there's ever any possibility of the world titles being merged from the brand split, needs to end. If it doesn't, we get the Brock Lesnar situation where a brand doesn't have a world champion to fight for. That's how I see it. Yeah, I don't think you do that. I don't see a world where you literally have one show on a network and another show under a different contract with a network. And one of those shows saying, yeah, we don't need any titles here. That's fine. The idea that everyone every year tries to book the merging of the two world titles is ridiculous to me. Fox needs a world title. USA needs a world title mm. because your show has to look important. It has to. If you have no champions on your show, why the fuck is anybody watching? And your show has an exclusive champion. Do you want the best champion in the world right now? Well, maybe that's on SmackDown. Maybe that's Roman Reigns. If you think not, then maybe you're watching Raw because that's where the other champion lives. I don't see a, a situation where the brand split can break because you don't want to be sharing TV shows and talent with another network. I mean, I don't understand contracts, but that seems like pretty basic business, right? Like, I want exclusivity. People need to watch my show because that's the only place yeah. they're going to see something. Right, Kev? Yeah, that's, you know, I think especially with, like you said, the two different networks, that will never happen. You know, maybe in years past before when they were both on USA, sure, I could, you know, see one champion. But, yeah, you would need, because you got to think that the other network would be so pissed off. Unless yes. they're going to merge those titles and then have a different title come up right behind it. Hundred percent. I mean, I think the idea that Roman's talking shit about Raw, building up Survivor Series, is great. And I think the idea that someone from Raw is going to show up on SmackDown and vice versa, I think that's great. Mm. I think those brand to brand invitationals and a wild card rule and all that shit is fantastic because you then do get a moment of, oh yeah, what about? And I think that's important too. And I think that if you dissolve the brand split, you lose that. If everybody's on every show, then for one, mm -hmm. TV times become even harder to market. And at the same time, if you know that Bailey Ding Dong Hello Show is your highest rated thing, why wouldn't you put it on fucking twice a week? How much time do you need to be doing that? How do you how do you tell yeah. Roman he's going to be on all the time and Drew's just not going to be anymore? You really start limiting the amount of time that you have towards each person. One of the reasons Bruce Pritchard talked about on his podcast about why the brand split even happened to begin with was because like Triple H and Stone Cold were on every single show and they were getting burnt the fuck out. And you had other people who were only on one show or the other anyways because that's just how they booked it, just so people weren't getting book burnt out. So really, it was a bigger stress on your top stars than it was on your, on your lower level stars. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Seems like, why would you want those people the most stressed? Maybe you have guys like Stone Cold walking the fuck out in the middle of Raw. I.E. happened one time. <laughs> Yeah. Took his ball and goed home. <laughs> Screw you guys. I'm going home. Yeah, <laughs> man, man, I'm going to go home. Kev, the show <laughs> ended with Drew McIntyre versus Randy Orton. And I'm sure Seamus got involved. I'm going to be honest. I turned off my TV. I did not give a shit. I checked out on Instagram and saw, yes, Seamus got involved. I even said before I went to bed because I was in bed already. I was like, I'm turning it off. I'm going to bed. Producer's watching the other room. She's all like, really? And I was like, it's Randy Orton versus Drew McIntyre. No one's going to win. I bet you Seamus comes out and there's a whole melee between them. 
went to bed. Decided to check it out in the morning. Yes, that's what happened. Because Seamus was pissed from before. Here's where we're at. And I don't give two shits about Drew McInfart. What's funny is I I also fell asleep during that match. Because yeah. I don't care about McIntyre. Yeah, I mean, and it's fine and I get it. Not Here's the one thing that's funny to me that, that Kev, you can talk on. I've said in the show year before, I've said it on, uh, I believe it was episode one before as well, that not every part of every show is for every viewer. This is a long show that has a lot of people in mind. So sometimes there's a segment that's just flat out not for me, and that's fine. It's just really weird to me right now to know that that segment right now happens to be your main event. This show seems so long to me. It felt like a four-hour show to me. It was endless, and your main event and your title is the part of your show that I give the least shits about. Which, if I'm driving to an arena and driving away from, then it's fine to me. Kev, what did you think about all this? Uh, basically the same exact thing. Like, I really could care less. Uh, we got Randy and Drew again for no apparent reason other than, you know, Randy's going to be one of the guys in the elimination chamber. Uh, it just, you know, your show, the main event is supposed to want you to want more. And this felt like it would have had the same effect if it was, you know, at the end of hour one instead of hour three. And, you know, once again, I think it's just because we're burnt out on McIntyre and, you know, they might not see it, but I don't need to see him three times in an episode. You know, the Randy Fiend stuff is great. That's what everyone wants more of. And it seems like we're getting it, you know, once every two weeks and yeah i just i can care less about it too yeah i just i just flat out turned it off i mean it's drew mackenfart dude what do i gotta know he's gonna go out there beat the shit out of randy orton no sell a whole bunch of stuff and then seamus <clears throat> is gonna come out and he's gonna destroy him in three seconds so we can build up to the elimination chamber where you wonder if jeff hardy will win the title off of drew mm-hmm. God, I don't know. I don't know if I need all that. I'm fine. It was a late night. I was not in the Thunderdome for the first time in a long time. Pretty pissed off already. Yeah. I am Thunderdome royalty. God damn it. Don't they know who I am? That's what I says. I hate you, Kev. VIP. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Kev, was there anything else in Raw that you thought we missed that we we need to make sure we were talking about? No, I think that was about it. One more thing, just quick on Drew Mac farts, is yeah. he needs a red kilt, goddammit. This blue kilt, A, looks like he's on SmackDown, and B, it looks like a fucking towel. You know... Bishop did say on Twitter during the Sasha Carmella Bianca segment that he needed a fashion episode with you and me pronto because he says he felt like he's seeing a lot of do's and don'ts. And my response was, well, Reginald's suit is matching Sasha's hair. So already your teams are distorted. So I do like that you're like, before we go, fashion (laughs) advice. (laughs) (laughs) because yeah. that's what we talk about here i actually saw that tweet the things that brought made me made me bring it up yeah because bishop is right god damn it we should be talking more about fashion spirit of fox does bring up a good point we don't need brock just like they don't need cm punk new talent ding dong hello i don't want more bailey what the fuck he goes i don't i want more bailey ding dong hello okay yeah 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 Every show is better with more Bailey. I actually do think they should bring Palmer that to a talk was show. essential there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, uh, that little talk show they did was actually really funny, and I do think they should bring that back, building up to WrestleMania. But now that we've established that Drew McInfart's kilt looks like a towel, which is probably to hold in and catch the fart. 
That buzz does coming out fast, dude. You know what I'm saying? If you're already mm-hmm. wearing a towel, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it's a filter. It's, it's like a mask. It's yes, a COVID mask it's for his ass. It's 100 percent ass mask. <laughs> <laughs> Guys. <laughs> I think we did it. I don't think there's anything left to say. Do you, is there anything else that you wanted to cover? Any any other grounds? Any any holes you needed to discuss or fill? No. Producer. I'm about holding up. That's about it. Yeah. Fabtina says, I hope Reckoning has a surprise comeback. Well, we've all been expecting it, so... I mean, yeah, I don't know how. I mean, I think it'd be dope if during a match she came out and just attacked Xavier Woods during a different match, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, We're definitely invested in all that. We'll see how this goes. We have Elimination Chamber coming up. Is it this Sunday or next Sunday? This Sunday's TakeOver. So it's next Sunday. Next Sunday, I believe. Yes. This this Sunday is TakeOver. Mm -hmm. Vengeance with the old Finn Balor versus Pete Dunn, which we will be definitely uh, paying attention to. Yeah, yeah, but we'll be able to talk about that on Thursday Night Chaser as we chase down the stench that is Wednesday Night Wrestling. As we drink it away from our memories, as we build into the go-home show of Vengeance, we will be back on Thursday to talk about all that. Kev? Thank you for coming back several times. The comeback king. No one comes back like Kevlar on the rocks with an X. We are Wrestling on the Rocks. You can find us at WrestlingOnTheRocks.com. W-O-T-R, the show on Twitter. Wrestling on the Rocks at Instagram. I'm at Ref Marsh. He is at Kevlar on the Rocks with an X. And that's last call. Sir. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, producer lady here. Thanks for tuning in. Continue to support us or buy us a drink by following and putting the I and subscribe on Twitch. Or subscribe and review our podcast on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to us. Cheers. I would never have a drink with Rustin on the Rock.